Your basketball potential is just a skyscraper that you want to build as high as you possibly can. There are four sections to this skyscraper, and each of those sections need a different material to build. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to build the tallest skyscraper. But before we get into the four sections of the building, how to build it up and all that, you first need to just understand the simple game illusion. And this illusion states that basketball looks like a simple game when you're just watching it, yet the level of complexity that is happening in the background is extremely high. This illusion comes to light when people comment on basketball that they watch on TV and point to it and say, look, the game is so simple. There's a reason why the basketball that they are watching is on TV in the first place because they're watching division one basketball or professional basketball, the NBA, that's like 0.0001% of the talent in the world when it comes to basketball. Of course, they're gonna give you an illusion that what they are doing is super simple. And then these people go further beyond this illusion to say that because they think that the game is simple with their eyes, people should train in a way that is simple. But they fail to remember two key things. What these players that they're watching did to get to the point where the game looks this simple wasn't by training simple things. They didn't get to where they are by repping out rip throughs, repping out jump stops, repping out defensive slides, wide open shots without the boost of ability that challenge gives. And the second thing that they forget is that the game being simple is an illusion. Because when you look deeper at how they move and why they move, you begin to realize that this game is exceedingly complex. Many people wanna take the things that are easily visible to them and call it the truth. And then they lack curiosity and humility to see the game in the way of how it truly is. Here's a quick example that can explain this. Think about watching your average third grade team. These aren't superstars or anything like that. It looks like absolute mayhem. Why is this? Because they can't stop the chaos in themselves. They are not capable enough to handle the chaos, so you see it on the outside. But when you see an NBA team play, they make the game look easy because all that chaos, they could stop it within themselves. They're physically, mentally, and emotionally skillful enough to be able to endure the complexity of the game. And therefore, their focus can be 100% spent on winning the actual game rather than the tools that you need to win. It's like if there's a rock rolling down a hill. If you're not strong enough to handle the force of the rock, it's just gonna run you over. The systems in your body are capable enough to be able to handle the chaos, the uncertainty, and the force of the rock. But you don't train that by simply sticking out your hands a hundred times in a row and saying, oh, you have to keep it simple when it comes to the training because you have to be able to stop the rock because this is how you stop it. No, there's so many other things going on besides the visual aspects that you see. You see this happening all the time. I'm stopping the rock, I'm stopping the rock, I'm stopping the rock. Is that all that's happening? It's naive to say that's all that's happening. There's muscles, there's nerves, there's, there's capacities, there's hormones, there's all these things that are happening inside your body. And you don't need to know all of it, but one key principle that you need to understand is that nothing can just happen for free, without a cost, without a sacrifice. You need to sacrifice something to achieve the things that you want to achieve if they're actually worth achieving. So a lot of times the framework of keep your training simple really just turns into keep your training easy. When there's nothing inherently wrong with keeping your training simple, it just turns out to be easy. What did the best players in the world do to get to where they are if it wasn't by doing extremely easy, simple training? They all did different things, right? Uh, you hear stories of John Moran's training. You hear stories of LeBron's training. You hear stories of all these different great players and the ways that they trained. And something very similar about all of them is that they were put into a situation where they were inspired or forced or really motivated to push themselves to the edge of their ability. They're trying to constantly find more and more challenge. And a lot of times this is because they have a father that was in the NBA or they have people around them that are really good at basketball and they're constantly surrounded by something that's motivating them, that's telling them that something more is possible. Something more can be achieved. And that is what they all have in common. It's not that they were all simplifying and making things easy. They all probably did very different things. They're all different people from different backgrounds, different circumstances, all of that. What did they do though? To increase their ability, they pushed themselves to the edge of their ability over and over and over and over again. Now they're able to handle things that a lot of people can't handle and fathom. They make everything look easy, make everything look simple, but it's not. They're just so robust and so capable that again, it makes everything look simple, but it's an illusion.
So how can you make the game look easy for yourself? You have to build your skyscraper as tall as you can, right? That's your potential to go back to that. And there are four main parts of this skyscraper. So let's start right away with the first part of your skyscraper, the ground floor of it. And the ground floor of it, we'll just call it physical ability. Everything from strength, power, speed, skill, anything that you can work on from a physical standpoint, we're going to base it all in there. So that's the first part of your skyscraper. And something that a lot of people get wrong is they are not looking to become as capable, as smooth, as skillfully able as the best players in the world because they just say, oh, they're just naturally really good at basketball. They're just naturally athletic. Stop trying to work to try to be like them. Like, don't do that. But it's one of the biggest hypocritical statements that I've ever heard in my life because these are the same people that say, oh, no, it's okay to strength train. What is strength training? Strength training is literally getting your body to become something that it's not. So if you're not having the framework of this is somebody that I want to be like, or this is a vision for myself that I have. Why wouldn't you do everything in your power to try to become that? It just doesn't make any sense. And I think the reason why people say, oh, it's not possible is because they want to discredit people or they're afraid to put in the work or because it's better to make an excuse. And that short term pill to swallow is a lot better than, okay, I have to go put in this work. I have to be humble. I have to realize that I am capable of something more, but I'm not it right now. And that's a hard pill to swallow in the short term. But in the long term, it can actually yield to insane results. I catch a lot of slack on social media when I post about movement training and I post about being effortless and falling and gravity and shin angle change. And people say this exact thing. Oh, this is what the best players do because they have it naturally. Stop trying to train like them. But I've gotten thousands of players online and players in real life in my gym to go from people that look like they are not capable, look like they have no natural ability. They just train it and they get better at it and they become somebody that looks like they have natural ability. I was somebody that couldn't jump over a freaking wooden block if I wanted to. And now I have a 35 inch standing vertical jump. How does that happen? It's years and years and years and years and years of hard work surrounded by the right people telling you what is possible, where you can go, keeping that accountability in check. It forces you to face the truth of what are the actions you need to do to achieve the things that you need to achieve. It really points the finger back at you and saying, this is your fault why you're not who you want to be, not anybody else's fault. Okay, so that's the base. We wanna to try to build that as wide as we can though, because if it's not a wide base, we can't stack it really high. So a lot of people mess up here and they don't build this wide base. Because if you think about it, a lot of people will go to the NBA strictly on their height, strictly on their athletic ability, strictly on all these different physical abilities because they have such a wide base, right? It's very hard to, by itself, build other abilities like IQ that we'll get into to make it to the NBA. Why? Because it's impossible to build your skyscraper that tall if you start at the top and try to build it out really wide. You need the bottom to be extremely wide, extremely robust, extremely stable so that you could build the skyscraper extremely tall. But it comes back to the same fact that just building out the base is not going to get you there, but it is the thing that leads to a higher potential height of the skyscraper. So with that said, let's get into the second thing that builds your skyscraper to be really tall. That is your perceptual ability and IQ. So again, a lot of people, they'll take that simple training framework, which they just frame it as simple, but it's really easy training or easy things to try to pick up on and they apply it to perception and IQ. And the problem with that is you can't explain to somebody in words how Steph Curry reads to come off a screen or how Kyrie Irving reads his defender or how John Morant can move his body around somebody that's trying to block his shot. There's no way to explain that in words. It doesn't happen overnight. These are things that need to be trained. These are things that need to be pushed to their edge of their ability. If you just try to explain things over and over and over again, it doesn't make it happen. You have to give somebody the experience, not just once over and over and over again. And sure, some things that can just open up somebody's game to a whole new height. I've definitely done it before, but the problem is these things are few and far between and you have to have a good eye to know when they're appropriate and to know when they're not gonna help at all because then your words just get drowned out because you're trying to over communicate everything. Not everything can be over communicated, right? You need to be trained. Your, your visual system, your nervous system needs to be trained in such a way where it can make certain reads, where you can understand certain concepts from a different level. 
there are levels to this. It takes experience, not just intellectual knowledge. Let's move on to the third thing to build your skyscraper as tall as it could possibly be so you could be at your highest potential. And that is going to be the mental emotional side of the game. What is your mindset? What is your emotional framework going into a game? Is fear getting in your way? Do you not have the right mental approach going into the game? And this is something that can switch in such a fast amount of time that it's at the top of the skyscraper, right? It's something that if it was really wide, it's not going to really help you that much because it's at the top, right? You're not building that much above it. And it's something that could switch really quickly. If you can quickly eliminate your fear, quickly not let that bog you down, change your mindset of somebody that all of a sudden wants to be somebody that's great, wants to be somebody that dominates every single possession, dominates in games. That's something that I've seen happen very fast, but it's not something that's going to automatically get you to the highest skyscraper. Again, you have to build the bottom as much as you can and then slowly stack it up. But this is something that's definitely important, definitely something to look at, and definitely something that could be trained and focused on. There's a lot more that goes into the mental emotional side of things. I'm not going to get into it completely, but it's there. Now, the last part of this skyscraper is the social side. What is your social positioning? Nobody talks about this. Your social positioning is something that can be worked on, something that can be trained, something that could be thought about to get you to where you want to go. If your coach doesn't think that you are valuable to him and his team, he will not play you, period. If you can position yourself as somebody that is valuable to him, valuable to your team, understand, have empathy for your coach and understand what he wants or she wants for themselves or for the team, then you could position yourself as somebody that will play more. And a lot of people really forget about this part. You could have all the skill in the world, all the athleticism in the world, all the strength in the world, all of the IQ in the world, all of that. But if you are not positioning yourself to get an opportunity, then all of these things just go out the window. Your skyscraper doesn't get really tall and your skyscraper stays exactly where it is. On the flip side, I've seen players that aren't even probably division two players play like 25, 30 minutes a game because of their social positioning, whether they did it consciously or unconsciously, whether it was their fault or not their fault. If you have the right situation, then your skyscraper can immediately go through the roof. There are players in the G League right now. There are players overseas that are NBA players. They're NBA caliber players that could probably help a team win a championship. But what happens? They don't get that opportunity, which can happen in a second, which is the difference between making $100,000, $50,000 a year, whatever it is, to $50 million a year. What a big difference in your potential. What a big difference in that skyscraper, right? By one opportunity. So it's one opportunity. Spend some time to focus on how are you positioning yourself from all those different standpoints, then you can increase the height of the skyscraper and increase the total basketball potential that you have. All right, so those are the four things that you need to build the tallest skyscraper, which is an analogy for you to increase the amount of potential that you have to its maximum when it comes to this basketball thing. But I want you to really key in on what we talked about more in the beginning of this video, which was why you shouldn't keep your training simple just for the sake of keeping it simple. because many of you are going to keep your training simple and stay in that perpetual rut of keeping your training easy. Your training shouldn't be easy. It should be pushing you to the edge of your ability. You shouldn't be doing things that you see visually. You should be seeing how they are done by the best players in the world and why the best players in the world do those things. Put yourself in environment, situation, drills, and challenges that actually push you to fight through the chaos and be able to withstand the chaos because that is the actual skill that the best players in the world have. They have the ability to focus on the task, focus on winning, focus on being dominant without having to worry about any type of chaos because they could handle it. Think about John Moran. Think about Russell Westbrook. Think about the best guards that you know that play this game. They look effortless out there because they could handle so much more than what the NBA game presents to them. If they couldn't, then they wouldn't look like the best players in the world. It wouldn't look simple. How can they handle all those things? Because they could handle so much more than what you actually see. They're able to do things and they are capable of things that you cannot do and that you are not capable of. The whole simple training framework, it doesn't mean anything and I've only seen it hold players back. That's it for this video. Challenge yourself, push yourself, put yourself in chaotic situations. That's the premise. If you like this video, press the like button and subscribe. Best way to support the channel. And I will see you next time.